Good evening, friends. Today, we have with us Mr. Tathagat Roy. He is a popular right-wing figure, followed by over 126,500 followers in Twitter. He has been termed as the rock star governor some time back, for he was and is the winner on Twitter. He finds an audience for his views on everything from Bengali leftists to giving insights into Mamta Banerjee's modus operandi. Let me, let me give you a small brief about this dynamic leader. He was born in Calcutta in 1945. British India with, with roots in Bra Brahman Baria, East Bengal, which is now Bangladesh. He was brought, brought up in Shillong and Calcutta and studied at St. Lawrence High School and Bengal Engineering College. He served in the Indian Railway, mostly in the Kolkata Metro project. He joined the RSS in 1986, the BJP in 1990, after leaving government service and joined the Yadavpur University as head of Department of Construction Engineering. He was the president of BJP West Bengal between 2002 and 2006 and member of BJP National Executive between 2002 and 2015. Later, he became the governor of Tripura, Meghalaya, and Arunachal Pradesh between 2015 and 2020. He's also the author of three books in English and Bengali. An avid traveler, he has visited Kailash Manasarovar on foot in 1996. He's married with two daughters who are both married. Welcome, sir, to our channel. Thank you. Nice today, we, yeah, today our viewers are very happy to see you. And uh, a lot of them always ask about what's happening in West Bengal. Uh, viewers, to, towards the end of the session, uh, Mr. Roy will take some of your questions. So pl please post them towards the end. Thank you so much. With just a few months left for the West Bengal elections, everyone in their right mind are worried about the future of West Bengal under a self-obsessed women chief minister who has suppressed the growth and progress in her state in her own way. My first question is, why is this chief minister always angry? and throwing tantrums and proving she's more of a street fighter than a chief minister. In fact, when she was in Bangalore, she had the DIG transferred for not controlling traffic when she came to Vidana Sauda during Kumaraswamy's swearing in ceremony. And uh, she had to walk a mile, so she was very upset. So she said, Hamse jo takraega, chur chur ho jayega. Why do the people of West Bengal support Mamta Banerjee? Because she's so she seems to be so, quite erratic, uh, Mr. Roy. Well, I'm quite surprised that she got upset that she had to walk one mile because I thought she likes to walk. <laughs> In fact, that is what she is best at. <laughs> Walking and uh, raising slogans and leading a procession. And, of course, street fighting, as you said. Uh, taking your question, why uh, people still support her, yeah. is that, you see, the initial reason why they supported her is that people saw her as the best bet for removing the CPIM government, CPIM-led government nominally, but uh, yes. practically it was CPIM's own government, yeah. which had reigned from 1977 to 19. Um, uh, to 2011 and had taken the state backwards like crazy, like there's no tomorrow. Yeah. So uh, at that time, uh, the, well, the politics of West Bengal was always polarized. Yes. And uh, we wanted it to be polarized so that one person or one party became... And we, uh, I was the, uh, the BJP president for part of the time. I supported yes. Mamta Banerjee wholeheartedly. Yes. And yes. she got also popular support, media support. And that's how she basically became uh, the, uh, won the election and uh, basically became the chief minister. Yes. That is the basic reason for her support. Beyond that, what has happened is another story altogether. So can you speak about, uh, uh, under her tenure, what all has happened in West Bengal, sir? See, it's a very strange thing that, you know, the reigning deity of uh, West Bengal is Madurga. 
Yeah. And Maa Durga is worshipped as killing Mahishasur. Now, Mamta Banerjee was seen in people's mind's eye as Maa Durga and CPIM was seen as Mahishasur. The strange thing is, after winning the election, Mamta Banerjee herself became Mahishasur. And she started emulating and copying every little thing that the CPIM had been doing. She must have reason in her mind, although she never uh, made it open. She must have reason in her mind that since if the CPIM could last in power for 34 years this way, so can I. So she started the same thing, basically politicizing the administration and the police using the police totally for her partisan purposes, um, uh, always keeping the people in a state of agitation. In fact, she began her uh, political uh, triumph with the, her march to victory through an unbelievable thing that is like driving out an industry. Uh, chief ministers from other states, they and fame by bringing in industries. Mamta yeah. Banerjee and fame by driving out an industry that is Tata Motors Singur plant. Yeah. So uh, she continued that tradition of being a street fighter. Initially, she got a lot of support. Then the support gradually began to wane. But on the whole, the um, uh, 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 people somehow must have reasoned that she must be given another chance. And by that time also the opposition to her had not crystallized to that extent. So she had, um, she got another fresh lease of life in 2016. Yeah. Then after that, uh, it's, uh, I mean, she is on a losing wicket right now. Uh, chances are that very good chances that she won't go through this election. Okay. So there has been a lot of uh, political killing, especially of uh, BJP workers, rather openly. And uh, 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 the center has also been rather quiet about it. Uh, how, how is this sort of thing done so openly, you know, without any retaliation? See, retaliation is difficult for two reasons. Yes. The police is, are in, police is in Trinamool Congress's hand mm -hmm. and the police is totally politicized. They, uh, she has systematically put such people in senior position in police who would do her bidding without giving two hoots about their constitutional responsibilities. Mm -hmm. It is as a result of that that this thing has been going on. And there is one difference in the um, modus operandi of the CPIM and Congress, the CPIM and Trinamool Congress. Yeah. See, the CPIM had a very sort of ironclad organization with which yeah. if a decision was taken at the very top level, uh, it, it got uh, translated into work at the very bottom level. Now, yeah. Trinamool doesn't have anything near it. It's a very, it's a very confused party, yeah. except for Mamuta. People do not owe allegiance to anyone, and she wants it that way. She wants to be the queen, queen, mm. queen bee, whatever. So she wants, she likes it. But in that case, how does she perpetuate her reign of terror with the CPM did? She does it by misusing the police. Mm. What does she do? She slaps cases. Mm. I was slapped with the case of, you can't imagine, attempted murder. In 2011, oh. when I was 67 years of age and a retired professor of an university, all that I had done was to go and uh, address a public meeting yeah. in a out of the way place in Hooghly district. Yes. And then three days later, I heard that a case for attempted murder has <laughs> been lodged against me and I had to spend the night in jail. Thereafter, of course, eventually, I mean, I had to go through the normal process of harassment that is going to attend the uh, court. And eventually I got honorably acquitted. But that is the way she functions. 
not everyone has the resources that I had as a yes. former mini, former uh, president of the state. So yes. most people are very badly harassed. Some of them are slapped with banned on non-bailable cases like NDPS, that is uh, this um, psychotropic substances, yes. uh, Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Act or Arms Act, under which uh, six months of police uh, police custody and judicial custody is almost inescapable. That kind of thing happens. That's how she operates. It's very similar to what's happening in Maharashtra, sir. Quite possibly, yes. I'm not yeah, very yeah. familiar, but what I read yeah. about it in the media, yes, uh, it's very similar. Yes, similar. To yes. CPI uh, has uh, has um, uh, sort of set a narrative for the whole of the country to follow. They themselves are sunk, but yeah. their narrative is being followed by the whole country. Uh, several yes. parties, several parties in the country. Yeah. Uh, the BJP office in North 24, Pargana's district was burned yes. down. A BJP yes. booth secretary was killed in Kuch Bihar. Mm -hmm. you know. And recently, a very weird case where uh, the hospital had declared a fully recovered coronavirus patient, Shibdas Banerjee, as dead by confusing yes. him with another Red Valley patient. I mean, yes. this is total, total chaos. Absolute chaos because she doesn't care about administration. Administration can go to hell. All yes. she wants is that she wants to win the next election, no matter yeah. what election, whether, you know, in West Bengal, all election, yeah. all uh, uh, public bodies are politicized to the right up to the bottom. That is including panchayats, including school boards, everything. Yeah. So she wants to win every election, mm -hmm. bar none. And for that, if she has to uh, sacrifice um, uh, administration, so be it. A dead person is declared as alive. Live person is declared a dead. What does it matter to her? Matter to her. Recently, a TMC leader in an undated video said, Jai Shri Ram will not be allowed in West Bengal. Go to Gujarat if you want to chant it. Yes. So uh, <laughs> he's, it's, it's like he's threatening the people <laughs> yes. of West Bengal that uh, if you're Hindus, you move to <laughs> Gujarat. <laughs> So, so that was done by it was, uh, Mamta Banerjee herself said an example. When she was going somewhere in a jeep, yeah. in a in a uh, car on the highway, somebody shouted Jai Shri Ram. She immediately stopped the jeep, got down and started abusing these people. They said nothing beyond Jai Shri Ram. Yeah. But she started abusing the people. Can you beat uh, that? So uh, Bengalis are basically intellectuals and they're very patriotic. I mean, you know, the, we, we know all the people who have been uh, in history. Uh, most of the most of them are very famous Bengalis. Why is it that the Bengali is so passive and not? Uh, is it because of terror, the kind of terror rule that she is imposing? It's largely because of terror. And yeah. you see, when you talk of Bengalis, you must understand that Bengalis are vertically divided yes. by religion into Bengali Hindus and Bengali Muslims. If you take all the Bengalis, Bengali speakers of the whole world, yeah. that is including India, Bangladesh and elsewhere, 80% are uh, roughly, no, about 70% roughly are Muslims. Yes. Only 30% of Bengali speakers are Hindus. Yeah. And in West Bengal, 30, uh, the Muslims constitute 30% of the population of whom quite a substantial part are yeah. Uh, illegal infiltrators from Bangladesh who have been given um, who have been given citizenship, who have been given ration cards and things like that. Yeah. So uh, what you are saying that Bengalis are intellectually inclined is quite true. Yeah. And the intellectual class of Bengalis are totally against her, except yeah. uh, for the minority who have been terrorized by her. So much so that I had seen some five leading intellectuals of the state, uh, literatures, singers, poets, made to stand in line and shout like a crow, ke -ke -chi -chi, <laughs> that is running yes. down the <laughs> Citizenship Amendment Act. I mean, it's a comic thing. Mamta was yeah. doing it, and these 
people, these respected people, some of whom I personally respect, they were uh, shouting this cacachichi, unspeakable. But yeah. they're basically terror. Yes. Uh, so, uh, it, it, does she uh, encourage Rohingyas and Bangladeshis to come and settle down she as does, uh, does. part of a world bank? Yeah. Isn't that she dangerous for us? Off and on, she has said that everybody who's living in Bengal is a citizen of India. Yeah. This is nonsense, absolute nonsense. We know that there in a huge um, Bangladeshi infiltration had taken place into, into Bengal and Assam, which are yeah. Bangladesh rim states, and yes. from which uh, um, Bangladeshis have come in through a very porous border. Yeah. Now the border is largely fenced, not completely, very far from completely, and infiltration is still going on. And uh, uh, part of the reason is uh, the looseness, corruption in the border security force. But even then, a lot of check has been put. But meanwhile, a lot of damage has been done. Yeah. These infiltrators who have come in, they have, uh, because West Bengal is industrially and commercially barren. That yeah. is why a lot of people who have come in, they have not yeah. settled down in West Bengal. They have fanned out all over the country, including yeah. your Bangalore. In yeah. Delhi, there are uh, large settlements of Bangladeshi infiltrators. Yeah. It is not difficult to fish them out and distinguish them or separate them from Indian Bengali Muslims. Yes. But uh, clearly, I mean, I had a scheme for it. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I had put that scheme to the government a number of times, uh, not exactly to the government, to the party. Yeah. But it has to be taken up in right earnest. It has to be sold to the people. And then finally, you, it has to be you, implemented. Yeah. It has not been done. Sorry? Could you explain some points about that, the scheme? You see, if you question a Bangladeshi Muslim, yeah. see, side by side, you take a legitimate... Indian Bengali Muslim and yeah. a Bangladeshi Muslim, you yeah. start questioning them. Yeah. In roughly 15 to 15 minutes to half an hour, you yeah. should be able to make out who is a Bangladeshi Muslim. Uh -huh. The reason for that is their Bengali is basically is some quite considerably different from our Bengali. Yeah. It's full of uh, uh, Persian and Arabic words which are mm -hmm. not understood in uh, West Bengal. Their familial relationships are different. For instance, what is Mosi in Hindi yes. and Mashi in Indian Bengali is in, in Bangladeshi Bengali, it is Khala. Ah. What is Bua in Hindi and Pishi in Indian Bengali is Fufa in Bangladeshi ah, like Bengali. Urdu. Uh, Urdu, yes. uh, like Urdu, like Urdu, yeah. yes. Uh, uh. A lot of Urdu words have come in. Uh, yeah. So if um, uh, these things are, uh, I mean, a uh, properly nuanced investigation, questioning is carried out, it shouldn't be difficult to ferret out uh, Bangladeshi infiltrators. Yes, yes. So the N the Rohingyas, never... of course, Rohingyas, of course, are the, the easiest ones to identify. America. They speak a very different language from standard Bengali. Then why is it difficult to push them out by the center? Because the by the center, see, you need the cooperation of the state government. Yes. And the state government is anything but ready to cooperate. They are openly saying that Rohingyas have got to be given, uh, Mamta Banerjee said, Rohingyas are poor people, Rohingyas are beleaguered people, they must be given, um, uh, 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 they must be given uh, uh, refuge, this kind of thing. The fact that the Rohingyas were creating, you know, they had an organization called ARSA mm -hmm. in Myanmar which absolutely, which was started beginning to terrorize the Buddhist minority majority over there. Yeah. As a result of which this whole uh, Rohingya business exodus had started. Yeah. Now, uh, these things are not publicized. Yeah. So the central government has got to do it against the opposition of the state government. Yeah. Yes. That is not easy. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So there were reports of Pakistan-sponsored Al-Qaeda planning terrorist attack in West Bengal, radicalizing yes. uh, youth through jihad. Can you yes. uh, tell us something about this, sir? Yes, it is fairly common. You see, I can't give you a more, uh, more ironclad proof of it hmm. than a chance statement from a chief minister 
of the CPIM, of the CPIM who themselves had encouraged this kind of infiltration. Yeah. See, after Jyoti Basu, the chief minister was Buddha Dev Bhattacharya. Yes. This Buddha Dev Bhattacharya, I think it was in 2002, mm. he let slip that some of the madrasas mm. in West Bengal, they were doing anti-national propaganda and yeah. teaching people anti-national things. Mm. So immediately the mullahs rose up and they said that this is this person is anti-Muslim, this this person is anti-secular, is criminal, etc., etc. And his party also pounced on him, with the result that Buddha Dev Bhattacharya's statement, which was printed in his own party organ, the yeah. next day he said, "No, I didn't say it." Everyone huh. said, "Sir, it has been printed in your own party organ." She said, huh. "He said, no, I haven't said it. It was that bad." What uh -huh. what better proof can there be? And yeah. even otherwise, it's very well known. I mean, the way the population, Muslim population, has swelled in the uh, this uh, border districts as yeah. compared to the districts further away, that itself yeah. is enough indication of what sort of uh, infiltration there has been from Bangladesh. Yeah. The NIA has apprehended. 11 Al-Qaeda terrorists from West Bengal since the month of September. Is this on a rise, sir? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, actually, we have terrorists of all varieties. Mm. Al-Qaeda, uh, Huji, uh, different kinds. But yeah. I, uh, the exact delineations of who is Al-Qaeda, who is Huji, who is... Uh, yeah. Uh, this uh, some other outfit can only be known to the um, security forces. Yes. But uh, the outcome of what they have done so far is mm. quite alarming. Yeah. It began with, you know, in near, there's a town called Bardhavan, which mm. is quite uh, near uh, mm. Kolkata. It's about uh, some 100 kilometers from Kolkata. There, yeah. there was an enormous... Uh, explosion. Hmm. I think it was in 2016, there was an enormous explosion in a locality of the town called Khagragar. Yes. And after that explosion took place, you'd be surprised to know that the normal reaction of the police would have been to go collect whatever explosives are left over there and then subject these to forensic examination. Yes. Instead of that, the hmm. local um, superintendent of police, he collected all the stuff and set fire to it. He took it to a riverside and set fire to it. It's a clear yeah. case of uh, destruction of evidence. Mm. Uh, he has been subjected to the rigor of law because eventually the case passed on to the NIA. Mm. But quite a lot of evidence has been lost by this person. Mm. This is the kind of thing that has been happening. After that, there have been endless arrests in spite of her uh, reluctance. There have been many cases of arrest. There have been many cases of uh, apprehension of explosive substances, clandestine arms, yes. fake uh, currency notes, everything. And uh, it's all happening to, to, to in certain pockets. It's largely <laughs> happening in certain pockets which are very close to the Bangladesh border. And the funny thing is, Bangladesh is progressing like anything and West Bengal is going backwards. Yes, you see, Bangladesh, what is happening is that Bangladesh, they've got a very progressive prime minister. Mm. And she has, she is trying to cut the feet of the fundamentalist fringe in the country. Not yeah. that she's entirely succeeding, but she is succeeding to a considerable extent. Yeah. And these um, uh, the um, fundamentalists or the the uh, uh, the uh, the Islamic radicals, not finding much refuge in Bangladesh, they are running away to West Bengal. They are running. Yeah. They are entering West Bengal. Certain yeah. parts of West Bengal are infested with them, and the police are not taking action. Yeah. In fact, this lady Sharmila is saying, Kolkata was the intellectual hub of India and city of art. This is the sorry state of Calcutta. Can center step in? Not to take in wrong perspective, but terrorism is being cultivated in nooks and corners. 
It is right. She is right to a large extent. You see, the, um, there are infirmities in our constitution as a result of which in certain matters the center is helpless. Yes. The, so the state uh, is once upon a time it was a hub of intellectuals. Still, yes. there are a large number of intellectuals. Yes. But this police terror yeah. has cornered a lot of these intellectuals uh, when, who are scared to say anything against the government. And yeah. they've been pushed out of the state. The yeah. bright Bengali people nowadays, you find them in Delhi, you find them in Varanasi, you find them in Lucknow, you find them in Mumbai. But the ones who were in Bengal, they have large numbers of them have been pushed out and okay. or scared to silence by her yeah. terror. Yeah. Uh, this is Shirish Thorat from USA. Yes, there is a question about opium cultivation. Yes, yes. Ah, you see, I don't know if opium cultivation is a very big um, uh, issue in West Bengal. Uh, rather, when I was in Tripura, yes. the cultivation of not so much opium but cannabis was a serious matter. You see, in certain parts of West Bengal, the seeds of opium are eaten as a vegetable. Yeah. It's called posto. Ah. And uh, it's a delicacy. Even I am fond of it. It's not intoxicating. Yeah. But um, so far, uh, opium cultivation and uh, the use of illegal opium has so far not surfaced as a serious problem. Sir, what about child trafficking and uh, women trafficking? Uh, this is one of the most serious problems that India is facing. For instance, in uh, Maharashtra, almost every day, uh, children are missing, women are missing. In a very shocking report in a Mumbai police station, uh, about 21 young women were missing. So uh, uh, we hear that this is also happening in West Bengal. It is happening in West Bengal. And sadly, uh, Mount Abanerji, who is supposed to be such a big champion of religious minorities, it yes. is happening more among the religious minorities rather yes. than the Hindus. Because yes. the religious minorities, namely the Muslims, they are economically and educationally backward. So a yes. lot of them are uh, sort of enticed yes. into doing jobs out of the state and in the process they are taken out of the state and pushed into um, clandestine operations, prostitution and the like. It happens. It's it's very common. So how come Hindus are still voting for Mamta, says Ned? Yes. You see, you see it's a, still a hangover from those days. Now, in 2011, when Mamta was seen as a crusader against the um, imposition, against the uh, tyranny of the CPIM. Now yes. the CPIM is totally uh, vanquished party. They uh, practically cease to exist. They are a very small group right now. Yeah. A lot of CPIM people have come and have um, uh, moved over to join the Trinamool Congress. Some have joined even the BJP. Though no yes. leader has joined. Yeah. But the Hindus... Uh, of Bengal, they had at some point of time had yeah. cast their lot with the uh, Trinamool Congress because of the reasons that I said a little earlier, and yes. the inertia has persisted. Yeah. But it is it is um, uh, it is reduced. It is waned to a very large extent, but to some extent, it has persisted. Sir, so there are uh, also uh, reports about crude bomb making activities in an increase in West Bengal. Oh, yes, As severe, yes. yeah, several blasts have been made, uh, taken yes. place in the last few months uh, yes, in West yes. Bengal. Stashes mm -hmm. of crude crude bomb stored by mm -hmm. TMC members, which exploded right. recently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not just bombs, uh, the handguns. Yeah. Well, there are two types. One are uh, the regular pistols. I mean, yeah. replicas of regular pistols. Yeah. Yeah. And the others uh, are called one-shotters. Yeah. They are sort of ersatz pistols with, yeah. whom, with which you can shoot only 
at at the time you can shoot only one bullet and then it gets heated up and then you have to uh, cool it again and shoot but yeah. they are good for uh, execution that kind of yeah. thing and yeah. uh, they certain parts are uh, of west bengal are replete with these things principally yeah. because uh, of uh, political patronage and also because uh, people have nothing else to do there is rampant unemployment yes Similarly, yeah. there is uh, uh, this distilling of hooch. Every yeah. now and then, every six months or so, you hear of people dying from uh, drinking illicit hooch. Yeah. The reason is uh, basically that yeah. unemployment, widespread unemployment. Yeah. What can we expect of a state where the chief minister takes pride in driving away in industry and that too like the Tata Motors? Yeah. <laughs> Raman uh, Bharatwaj is saying, Ma'am, I'm short of money. What can we do to bring back pride of Bengal? Can we fight against goons in government system and bureaucracy? I don't see what is uh, his not be his being short of money has got anything uh, to do with it. <laughs> Maybe he's but talking about unem unemployment. Yes, unemployment. No, yeah. but the, there is, you know, there is that saying in America that you can fight city hall. Yeah. Right. Mm. You've got to get up and fight. You yeah. got to get up and fight. Uh, people expected that when uh, my tenure as government uh, governor had ended, yeah. I would quietly retire. But I decided, for good or evil, whatever comes my way, I have decided that I'm not going to give up the fight. I'm going to keep on fighting until we get rid of this scourge. Yeah. Uh, Sharmila is saying, we've noticed that in states like Kolkata and Mumbai, the first corruption starts by manipulating the police. Can police be an independent body answerable to central body? Yes, that is a thought that has crossed my mind also from time to time. Yeah. It, of course, will require a very extensive constitutional um, amendment, uh, but uh, it's worth looking at, definitely. Yeah. Because yeah. I have seen it, this kind yeah. of misuse of police, yes. not only in West Bengal, I had seen it in Meghalaya, seen yeah. it in other places where mm. Meghalaya it's used for uh, the police are used for ethnic purposes. I mean, yeah. uh, in persecuting uh, ethnic minorities yeah. in West Bengal, they are used for persecuting political minorities or political um, uh, anti government forces. Do you think uh, BJP will come to power in the next election? Let's see. Yes, I definitely think so. In fact, I'm fairly sure it will. But there is one condition that BJP must get its act together. It is not enough that the people want it. The people yeah. desperately want it now. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, not just because they support the BJP, but they want the Trinomul to be out for three reasons, for several reasons. Number one is the, the total unemployment situation in the state, the economic uh, downturn the state yeah. has been facing. Second is the widespread and rampant corruption that is going on in the state. Yeah. The third is uh, uh, the uh, mollycoddling, the uh, appeasement of the minorities at the cost of the majority, that is Muslims at the cost of Hindus, which yeah. has been going on. There are several such things, but uh, um, I get the uh, impression that particularly in rural areas, the corruption is the biggest issue. It's unbelievable the corruption that is uh, rampant on the country, in the countryside. Yeah. yeah. He's, uh, Mr. Prakash says that a Supreme Court judge in support of police administration should be independent of state, which is again the point that you mentioned. Quite right. There yeah. are indeed Supreme Court judgments. The point is that Supreme Court judgments have got to be implemented. Yes. And if they are not implemented, then you've got to go again to the Supreme Court for contempt, in contempt. Now, how many people have got the money and the resources to do that? Yeah. This has got to be put in the shape of a constitutional amendment and the police have got to be armed with yes. powers to go against the orders of the government if such orders are unconstitutional. Yeah. How exactly that is going to be, can be done is a matter for uh, legal experts and constitutional experts to work. But I am sure that it is something that seriously needs to be looked at. Yeah. 
Another question is, what can we do to flush out the highly left doctrine being inculcated in universities like Yadavpur, Ned, Ned asks. Yes, actually I had taught in Jadavpur University for 20 years. Yes. The uh, the bad name that Jadavpur University has got belongs only to a small uh, group in the arts faculty of Jadavpur University. I taught in the engineering faculty. There isn't a whiff of this thing. In the yes. science faculty also, it's largely free. It's only the engineer, the arts faculty where it is happening and they are very vociferous. They don't have any hopes of jobs. So this is the only way in which they can come to... Uh, uh, come to uh, prominence. But it is my impression that people are fed up with leftism. Only thing it has got to be uh, weeded out by a, by an intellectual process. You see, this leftism to which the Bengali Hindus have been subjected, not Bengali Muslims, mind you. The proof of that is in Bangladesh, the left, left parties have to be uh, seen with a telescope and a microscope. Still, you wouldn't yeah. find them. Yeah. But among Bengali Hindus in West Bengal, the left has a following because the uh, um, uh, leftists, particularly the communists, have been working among these people since the 1920s. That is almost a century. That yeah. is no um, uh, easy task. To, yeah. uh, I mean, it has entered the DNA of a lot of people. It yeah. has altered the value system. Yeah. See, in West Bengal, lot of, uh, to a lot of people, their prosperity is seen as a bad thing. Yeah. Squalor and poverty are seen as desirable uh, things. Yes. Certain uh, verses, yeah. you, uh, if you knew Bengali, I would have explained to you how, what exactly is the impact of those verses. Certain verses have been uh, introduced in school curricula, yeah. which would try to uh, put these ideas in the heads of tender young children yeah. that poverty is a good thing, squalor yeah. is a good thing, rich, being rich is a horrible thing, this kind of thing. Now, if amassing money by legitimate means is yeah. uh, made into a bad thing, then yeah. can you imagine how a uh, set of people can progress economically? They cannot. Yeah. But it has to be very carefully done. It has to be very assiduously done. I yeah. am, one of the things that I am doing is that by writing books, one of my books, the last book, is called uh, Bampontha Bhankori, which means leftism is terrible. Mm. Yeah. It's, so a, it's in Bengali only. Mm. Yeah. So a question from Mahesh S. He says, yes. OVC's AIMM is planning to enter Bengal politics what do you think are their chances? He's mm, intending they to have allies. some chances. I mean, judging yeah. by the success that Muslim they have uh, had in Bihar, yeah. uh, I would say they have their uh, they have their chances, and it's not very uh, it's not not a very comforting thought. Yeah. Some might think that they would split the Muslim board, and in the process they would help the BJP. But I am not one which who shares that kind of thing because. These things are, uh, they, they, uh, this is a virus. You, uh, uh, the virus has entered the body. You have injected it to kill some other virus. Then this virus grows to some proportions which kills the body itself. So yeah, I am not yeah. uh, at all in favor of this thing. But uh, to answer the question that has just now been put, yeah. I would say that they do have a lot of chance judging by their success in Bihar. Yeah. Another question is, Didi is perturbed by SM posts, social media posts, and lodged against yes. the person in Delhi. SC came in rescue in four. Yes. In fact, in fact, sir, this is happening in Kerala as well as in uh, mm. Maharashtra. Yes. <laughs> people yes, don't yes, want yes. Uh, people to comment or criticize their government. Absolutely. You know, the first case that took place was in a uh, case of a lecturer from my own university, that is Yadupur. Yes. Poor man, he had he had not even posted. He had yes. merely retweeted some cartoon of yes. the chief minister. Chief yes. minister was aghast and she shouted on media that this is cyber crime. Mm -hmm. This is something has got to be done. He's got to mm -hmm. be put behind the bars. Of course, the yes. courts released him. 
We yeah. still have an independent judiciary. Th- uh, th- God be thanked. Yeah. But then how long uh, this uh, thing is going to last, I don't know. And besides, for a person who is never, who is not in politics, who has never seen the inside of a police lockup, for yeah. him to be uh, subjected to this is quite unnerving. Yes. Sir Sharmila is asking, Sir, you are very knowledgeable and have immense experience, but our request is to do something to bring change to Calcutta. This is a very serious matter. We need your support. Uh, I would thank Sharmila for the very kind compliments. I try to do my best. You see, I have chosen the path of politics. I'm trying to do what I can. Yeah. Politics and writing, both. Yes. Uh, CBS Prakash says, why Didi has staged a street protest prevented CBI investigation in Sharda case to defend her DGP? Very simple, because they are involved. Yeah. So naturally, she wouldn't want the investigation to proceed. What is the kind of she, uh, what is the kind of uh, uh, relationship between her and Modi ji? Because they never seem to. <laughs> no, to because face. her uh, her politics is uh, based around uh, opposition. This yeah. is very much like communist politics because the communists know that they'll never come to power in the center. Yeah. So their politics during these 34th year of their rule was centered around shouting, uh, shouting anti-center slogans. Yeah. And it was a spurious shout, you know, because there was a policy of uh, which was uh, started by the Congress of what yeah. is called the uh, freight equalization. You must have yeah. heard of it. Mm-hmm. Freight equalization harmed states, eastern, eastern states like Bengal, Bihar and Odisha very badly. Yeah. And the communists cried themselves hoarse yeah. about against state equalization and how the center was bleeding West Bengal. But they never said it on the floor of the parliament. They never said it in Western India or South India or any other part of India other than Eastern India itself. Yes. So this is all hypocritical. Mm-hmm. Their politics is willy-nilly to shout against the center yeah. and prove that the center is uh, this thing, uh, center is exploiting us. There is a uh, very nefarious design to it also. Yeah. Some There are some people who try to prove that we Bengalis of uh, West Bengal are closer to Bangla, Bengalis of Bangladesh rather than to the rest of India. It's all nonsense. Actually, yeah. we, were, we have been f- uh, saved by the fact that Dr. Shamaprasad Mukherjee worked hard and split the erstwhile district, erstwhile uh, province of Bengal presidency in uh, British India and snatched away the Hindu majority part of the province Mm. and joined it to India to create a homeland for Hindus. But these people, they are, for the sake of the Muslim vote bank, they try to prove the opposite. These things are afoot. They have got to be identified and they've got to be attacked. Yes. Is Mamta personally corrupt or is she, she collecting funds for the party? What about her nephew, Nedas? Well, hmm, I don't have proof that I can place before a court of law. Yeah. But I'll give you some, some facts. Say, mm-hmm. for instance, she mm-hmm. made a painting. Mm-hmm. She's supposed to be a great painter. You're right, right. In the yeah. opinion of herself and her followers, she's a great painter, right? Now she had done some painting and she had sold it to a person called Sudipta Sen for a sum of one crore and eighty lakhs of rupees. Yes. Right. Now, who is Sudipta Sen? Sudipta Sen was the head honcho of one of the shit fund companies called Sarda. And yeah. he's right now behind the bus. Yeah. And the artistic quality of this particular painting, which Mamta Banerjee made, can be easily judged. So from that, one can make out how much what she is doing. There are several other things. She had held meetings with these uh, uh, um, heads of these chit funds, not just Sudipta Sen, but another guy called Gautam Kundu. Uh, she has 
um, give an unfair advantage to certain uh, other commercial undertakings. Uh, they, there are quite a few examples, and it's very difficult. And uh, the uh, kind of properties that her brothers have bought in certain areas of Kolkata, they say it's, uh, that area is called Kaligat, and it is said that Kaligat is clearly on the way to becoming Banerjee Pada because her brothers are buying off this property at throwaway prices by holding guns to the heads of the present owners. Mm -hmm. So this is the kind of situation that is happening now. After from that, you can draw your own conclusions. Yeah. In fact, uh, yes, uh, last evening, uh, Mr. Iqbal, you were saying about, uh, he was talking about, uh, uh, you know, the Gupkar, Gupkar area, you know, completely mm. being bought over by the Abdullahs. Mm. So it's very similar mm. when people come to power, you know, mm. they misuse it. In fact, uh, so, you know, when, when you talk about uh, Mamta's painting, it reminds me of uh, A.K. Anthony's wife, who also mm. sold her paintings to the airport, Kerala airport, at a very high mm. rate. Oh, <laughs> and the paint, and, and I'm, an, I, I'm an artist myself. We can judge mm. what what kind of art this is all about. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so, and the next question is, uh, what's the secret of Mamta holding office, holding uh, this many years? <laughs> it's not uh, very long. It's ten years, mm. and the first time she got it as a symbol of uh, opposition to the tyranny of the CPIM, and yeah. the second time it was just the the uh, inertia of that in the sense that people wanted to give her another chance. Yeah. I don't think she's going to have a third, second chance. Yeah. Third Raman, chance, yeah, yeah. Raman Bharadwaj says, is BJP determined if they come in power, will they settle the issue of illegal immigrants and neutralize change in demography? I should think so. Yeah. At least that is my understanding of my own party. Yeah. Sharmila says, we feel the problem with Calcutta is mostly because of missing corporates in the states. So the crowd is mostly unskilled and she let the people be unskilled because they can be managed easily at her level. That is true. See, yes. why have once upon a time West Bengal was the most industrially advanced state in the country? Yes. Now, what happened to it? Systematically, the communists have driven out these industries by fomenting yes. labor trouble in them yes. and certain owners wanted to clear out of the state by giving them help through their labor unions they had done it yes. they had said things like they or their uh, acolytes uh, similarly minded parties they had done things like saying like gerau is a legal uh, thing then uh, 1977 when uh, the left front first came to power with yeah. a clear majority they said that the labor has an unfettered right to go yeah. and snatch their dues from the owners of factories. The police are not going to help the owners of factories. Now, this kind of thing put the fear of uh, unknown, fear of uh, destruction, fear of uh, everything in the entrepreneurs, and they um, uh, ran away because this kind of thing doesn't happen every, anywhere else. Yeah. In fact, our neighboring Odisha, which was yeah. a very backward state, industrially backward state, now is it's yeah. progressing at a huge speed. Hmm. Assam, even Assam is a lot better now. Bihar promises to be very much better. Jharkhand, of course, has a lot of uh, natural resources. West Bengal is going backward and backward and backward. Hmm. Parvati Gumi Delhi is asking, is our nation a developing country or a developed country? And is our country a democratic country? What is meant by developing and democracy? You see, these are economic terms and there are very clear um, uh, definitions of uh, given by international economic bodies as to what is the definition. Where, where does uh, develop, uh, developing countries uh, what is the uh, borderline between developing countries and developed countries? Our country is certainly not a developed country, but it is not a developing country. There, it's a middle-income country. It is until uh, some some years back, it was a low-income country, largely thanks to Pandit Nehru's 
uh, the economic uh, theory and uh, that his industrial policy resolution of blindly following the Soviet model, as a result of which we were stuck at 2% or 3% growth and a culture of public sector, as a result of which we were said that we were growing at a Hindu rate of growth. Yeah. In 1991, the situation became so bad that we were about to default on our payments and we had to uh, beg for money from the IMF. The IMF forced us to change tack and um, uh, introduce reforms. Very fortunately, at that time, we had a very good prime minister in um, uh, P.V. Narasimha Rao and um, good uh, reform seeking a finance minister in Manmohan Singh and a civil servant like uh, uh, Aluwalia, Montek Singh Aluwalia. Yeah. Now, that is not to say that when Manmohan Singh became a prime minister, he gave a good account of himself. But as yeah. a finance minister pushing the Reforms agenda, he I would say he did a good he did good work. Yeah. Then after that, of course, Sonia Gandhi stepped in and then it became two steps for forward and one step back, sometimes one step forward and two steps back. But we must remember that we had been pushed to this level of underdevelopment largely because of the Nehruvian policies of public sector and uh, uh, the Soviet style planned economy. Just imagine, in 1945, when the Second World War ended, countries like uh, Germany, Japan, uh, Taiwan, Korea, they didn't have a single building intact in their country. Yeah. And then they entered, they got into the First World in a matter of 30, 40 years. And where are we? We were going around with a begging bowl. It is only after the, the reforms of 1991 that... Uh, uh, things have started improving, but still they have not improved to the extent we have we ought to. Plus, there is the growth of population, which should have been put a, put a check to right at the beginning. Now, the Soviets believe they have a sparsely populated country. They yeah. believe that population is an asset, and Nehru blindly copied them as a result of which our country is now bursting with population. And uh, the per capita income is... Even if you increase the, uh, the national income, the per capita income remains where it is because of the increase in population. Yeah. <laughs> A question from Priyadarshi uh, uh, Sharma. Did it take 10 years for the people of Bengal to realize that Mamta is no leader to attract FDI and foreign investment in the state? Don't you think people are to be blamed for choosing such leaders? You're making a mistake. It didn't take 10 years. It took five years. First five years, Mamta was given uh, the mandate to rule the state because she removed the seat game. At the end of five years, she was given another mandate. Then the people did not have the choice to oust her until 10 years elapsed. Yeah. At the end of 10 years, people have realized that she ought to be, uh, she ought to be ousted. And uh, the time for that is time for reckoning, so to say, is coming in another few months. Yeah. So is there a similarity between uh, Kerala politics and uh, Bengal politics, West Bengal politics? See, I don't know too much about Kerala politics, but there are, uh, I would rather talk about the, the, the dissimilarities. There, is, yeah. there are similarities, of course, in the sense that the left parties dominate and there is polarization in Kerala. It is between UDF and LDF. Yes. In West Bengal, it was until the 1980s, it was between the Congress and the left front. But the Congress had become a stooge of the left front so that the left front was just ruling. Yes. Then it became the left front versus the Trinamool Congress. Now it is a Congress, left front, Trinamool Congress. Everybody has coalesced to form an anti-BJP front, so they are against the BJP. So to that extent, the politics is not similar. Also, the, in Kerala, uh, Kerala does not have an um, international border. So that is one thing, in spite of the fact that they have a very um, sad history of communal disturbances. 
uh, which goes back to the 1921 Mopla rebellion, which is yeah. only euphemistically called a rebellion. It was a yeah. anti-Hindu pogrom. Yeah. But uh, in spite of that, it does not have any um, um, border or a boundary with a uh, Muslim country, whereas West Bengal does have, and that is a very serious problem. It's the same problem is shared by Assam also. Assam also has the same problem. Yeah, because uh, Pinarayi, the chief minister, behaves in mm. a very, very similar pattern to Mamta. Yes, to a large extent. But, but yeah. uh, you know, the... Uh, CPIM is a structured party and uh, to that extent they function differently Ooh. and uh, uh, yeah, they, yeah they, as I said as I had said earlier Mamta is following the CPIM's rule CPIM's methods yeah. line for line except the except for the fact that she has no faith in her own cutters, okay. so she's using the police as her own cutters. I don't know what Pinara is doing. Yeah. Sharmila is asking, a person brought up in Calcutta does excellently anywhere in the world and holding very good positions in corporates around the world. So it's only the government that has to be blamed. Yes, that is right. Yeah. But why is the government to be blamed? Who put that government in position? The people of yeah. the state put that government in position. Yeah. For, for what reason? It is because of this left ethos that this has happened. Yeah. We Bengali Hindus must get rid of this left ethos. That yeah. is one thing that I try very hard. Yeah. Uh, in fact, as I said, the last book that I've written is directed basically at that. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Ratanlal Purohit says, BJP will get 200 plus. Thank you very much. I certainly <laughs> hope so. <laughs> So on a concluding note, could you say, yes. I mean, you are a patriot and you've seen the way West Bengal has gone down and it must be very sad, um, saddening for you. What are your very thoughts sad. and yeah, what are your thoughts and also how uh, we can look at the future elections, what we can uh, see in that? Yes. See what the way I look at it, what we ought to do is to mount an ideological campaign. That is one thing that is missing. BJP right now in West Bengal is going the whole hog in fighting the Trinamool Congress. Yes. And people who oppose this kind of misrule that has been going on for the last 10 years, they are, uh, they, they are marshalling themselves behind this thing. But in addition to this, there has to be ideological uh, cleansing of this garbage, this leftist garbage from the minds of the people, unless that is done, <coughs> unless the value of money is understood by the people, yes. unless it is understood by the people that uh, if you do not try to make money legitimately, then you will never, if you try, you may make money, you may not make money. But if you don't try or if you believe that making money is evil, then you will not get anywhere. Yeah. We are not, a, um, uh, through politics, we are not trying to reach some ethereal, um, uh, some kind of uh, spiritual heights. We are trying to improve our daily lives in a concrete sense. Yeah. So I believe, I personally believe that ideological cleansing, ideological indoctrination, ideological um, uh, removal of this leftist garbage is an essential thing. In fact, that's the point that Sharmila makes. She says, sir, when the majority is infiltrated, crowd for only votes. So the population, uh, no, before that, yeah. She said something mm -hmm. else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wants to, who wants to throw wants her to is throw becoming, her because becoming, becoming a minority. Not exactly that. Mm -hmm. Let's see how things pan out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you so much, sir, for your Thank time you. and for My taking pleasure. questions. <laughs> we, we'll ask you to join us for another session later. Thank you so much and good night. Good night.